you so much for allowing your husband to stay here uh, to be a blessing to uh, Ghanaians and people across the board. I mean, he's a blessing and I, I, I bless God for your life, for being the one who supports him and strengthens him as he wakes up every day to do the work of the kingdom. Thank you very much. And the entire family, God bless you. All right. So last week we, we started with uh, understanding, you know, fathers and mm. uh, understanding men in marriage. We, we wanted women to understand how men are framed mm. so that, you know, women have something that they say mm. so women you know so you know men are the ones who 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 the ones the the ones who are the 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 first need of every man, especially the man that has become a husband, what they require most is that utmost respect. Mm. And so we said that without respect, mm. which to the man speaks of love, the relationship cannot progress. That's right. No matter how old, how wealthy a woman who has become a wife is, mm. God has made the man the head. And so it's in the psyche, it's in the make of the man mm. that he should be respected. Okay. Without that, there cannot be any peace, there cannot be any joy because the man feels he's reduced. Mm. And then we said that respect ought to be commanded, not mm. demanded. Okay. And so if you are a man, you don't go telling your wife, you have to respect me. I'm the man of the I'm the husband. Respect me. No. It is commanded. Basically, what you do speaks of how you should be treated. Mm -hmm. However, when you are not respected at a point in time, it's possible it started from the onset. Mm -hmm. That from the beginning, the signs were there. Mm -hmm. Because it is said that when a woman is fully, genuinely in love, she easily submits. Okay. And then we also made a point across that wives should not look up to the husband's behavior before they respect husbands. Mm. Because God commanded that husbands should be respected, which we call it submission. That is willingly giving in to the leadership of the man reverencing him in speech and in act, that the man should be the head and then the woman supports. Mm. And so, the, along the line, such respect could be broken based on abuse or even neglect. And mm. abuse comes from various angles. That is, okay. when a man begins to disrespect and abuse the wife, it could lead to the woman losing that respect for the husband. Okay. And there are people that are very disrespectful because women women or wives were told to submit because naturally beautiful women women who are loved naturally there is some pride in them mm. and so god commanded okay. that the wife should submit and that's why when the woman is fully in love and she feels that sense of affection she easily submits. submits. Mm. Once you don't see it, the signs of respect from the onset, don't bother yourself going into that relationship. It will not work. Mm. You fight the whole of your life and mm. endure mm. instead of enjoying mm. that relationship. Mm. So men should command that respect by how they carry themselves in that relationship, mm. how they treat their wives in that relationship, how they speak to them. It shouldn't be a demand by our act that should come easily that is i think a few of the things that yes yes uh, we are that, that that's good that's good and um, so you you also emphasize that whether the man uh, you don't say because the man is rich uh, he's educated that's why you are respecting but then no. god commands that if you're a wife you should be able to respect once you accept as a woman to become the wife of any man it means you are Agreeing on the terms of God. Okay. You don't enter into a relationship and begin to think that you are now going to, whether I should respect him or not. Okay. 
the moment you agree to become a wife, there is a command from God and a demand upon your life that you will submit to his leadership. You respect him as your husband and allow him to take the lead whilst you support. If that is not there, you cannot call anybody a husband. Mm. And so, no matter what level you have reached as a woman, once you decide to become a wife, then you should understand that your roles have changed. Mm. You are now going to submit to the leadership of this man you have accepted to be your husband. Till that is established, don't even bother yourself going into any marriage as a woman. Mm. Because it will not work. There will always be chaos in the home. It is a recipe for disaster. Mm. That's why we must, one of the signs to look out for before you accept to marry anyone is respect. The love is measured. I said love is measured by sacrifice or selflessness and respect. Okay. If you love someone, that's from the onset. If you love someone, you see all the courtesies are being applied. You want to open the door. Mm. You want to fetch water. You want to do this. See to it that that person is very well taken care of. So it comes from the onset and it must run through the relationship. Mm. We must keep our relationship on the foundation of respect and the roofing of respect. What are the signs? That, I mean, what what will one do for you to to see that a person respects this one or doesn't respect this one? How you talk to that individual? Okay. Because communication is the foundation or the bone of every relationship. Mm. How do you talk to this individual? Do you insult him? How you see that individual? How you relate with him in terms of uh, the, the house affairs, taking care of things? You see, the man should be handled like a king. Not because he's rich or he's poor. Mm, not at but all. But because he's become your husband. He's, God commands you to see him as a husband. I, as, the, as your husband, and he must be treated as a king. How will you handle a king? A king? Mm. If you handle your man as a king, and the other things which we shall talk about is added, mm. except that man is very, very ungrateful, he will respect you and he will take good care of you. Mm. Except that man is not being well trained and uh, it's not cultured. Any man that is treated like a king will treat you like a queen. Will treat naturally. Not, naturally. It's a default. That's how God made. That is how it is. So you take good care of them, you reverence them, you honor them. That is why you don't speak back. Mm. You, you don't, don't speak back. You don't speak back. You don't insult. You don't exchange words. When the man is angry, you, you just have to be quiet. Let him say whatever it is. Then you, you find wisdom to answer. You see, one of the things that when I met my wife, I shared with her, which we have handled up to this time, we've never, ever exchanged words before. I say this to the glory, but I told her, listen, I, I'm a typical Asante man. I grew, I grew up in, I was born in Sekeni Takrade. I grew up from that land. I've seen people carrying women, insulting their husband. I can't stand it. That is This is what my mom told me. I can't take insults. So I told her from the answer, listen, lady, I will never abuse you verbally. And I don't expect you to ever insult me. Anytime it happens, no matter where we have reached, it will be the end of our relationship. And so, we, we talk about issues and we don't attack individuals. So this is how we relate with ourselves. We deal with issues and we have great respect among ourselves. Mm. If, if this attitude is taken into a relationship, we will go far. Mm. Because love, if love is fully at work, and if we are in love, I want to take good care of you because I love you. And if you love me, you also want to take good care of me because love does not seek its own. Mm. According to First Corinthians uh, 13, mm. love seeks the welfare of the beloved. And so if you claim to love me, then you are selfless towards me. Mm. But if you love yourself more than me, then you are selfish. Mm. And the selfish does not qualify to marry. Mm. 
No. Mm. Because you want to seek your own. Every day, everything is about you. You want attention. You should do this for me. Do this for me. But no. If I love you, I want to see to it that you are well taken good care of. And if you love me, this is how it works. I take care of you. You take care of me. And from the onset, this is how respect comes in. I know that, yes, this woman can easily submit. And I can love her and cherish her because of how we treat ourselves. Mm -hmm. We should know how to deal with issues, separating it from mm -hmm. the individual. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. I want us to go straight to um, the points. Um, what are some of the things, A, B, C, as we discuss, that women are to know about their husbands? Okay. Mm. The, the first thing we've mentioned is respect. The second thing, even though there is a, 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 a competition between food and sex, mm. that people think that men does not joke with their food, but on the majority, sex becomes the number two thing that every man needs. Okay. Man needs sex, mm. and and it's not something that he wants. He needs it. Mm. He needs it. He doesn't want it. it. No, he needs it because God has plugged it in the system of that individual as a man. That is why one year, two year old boy wakes up early morning, four, five a.m. and his his boy, his man with his pennies will be standing at attention. Two years. Why is it standing attention? Because God has made it like that. Now, when you consider even the teenage life, mm. at, at that teenage from 13 upwards, you will understand that there is a point in time when the man does not have sex. When you go into the loo, you will see semen mm. coming out. Mm. When you, you when you urinate, mm. when you sit on the toilet, it will be coming or out. Or you will dream the and system. then you wake up in the morning and you are yes. wet. Yeah. Yes. Because that is how God... So, when the man is married, if he wanted someone to cook for him, wanted someone to sweep the house, he could have brought in his sister or still live with his mother. The man is naturally satisfied by sex. It calms them down. And so, if you want to reach out to the heart of your husband, never deny him sex. I, I, I've heard of women, as a, as a married counselor, I've heard of women who use sex as punishment against their husbands when they think their husbands did not treat them well. But then, if you live by that system, you might lose your husband because someone else will be willing to open, open up. Mm. And once someone satisfy him, you see that he will even lose interest to sleep with you again. Mm. And so, men want sex. They need sex. They need sex and they need good sex. And so good sex means that when they, you are, they are with you as a wife, you have to appeal to them sexually and you have to add up everything you know about sex. You, that's where you have to read books. You have to listen to people and upgrade your sexual style so that the man will be fully satisfied sexually. In fact, if the man is fully satisfied, if you think that even your man is a humanizer, if you like give it to him three times a day, he will not have the strength to go out. Some might say they will still go out, but they might be too tired that when they go out, they will not be able to satisfy that woman who might make fun of them. Give it to him. Morning, afternoon, evening. Morning, like after, like Prestamon. Women don't have problems. Prestamon will take it two, two, three. You see, yeah. women don't have problems simply because there is nothing like erection. Okay. All they need is that they will be wet. If they don't wet, there are oils, there are lubricants that they can use. All you need is to strengthen yourself and be able to shake Guard yourself. Guard your loins with strength. Move. That is all. And then handle the man. Let's, let's look at something. I mean, I'm, 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 I really like what you are saying. You talk about giving your husband a good sex. That's right. We, are, we have women who didn't have any form of relationship or had sex before they met their husband. We yeah. have women who had time mm. you know to have a lot of sex and so they may know how to twist their waist and all that and, yeah. and do all the styles yeah. now this is a man who also 
didn't have that opportunity or did not put himself in that on that road okay. where he goes around having sex or maybe he sexually he becomes addicted to sex mm. i'm looking at the church now okay we do a lot of counseling yeah and then we are bringing the men uh with the women to our offices and we are encouraging them to marry and we are teaching them about sex sure is it important to know the sex rating yeah. in terms of the man you are going to marry that my husband knows about sex and is he may be even addicted to it so that the one who did not have any experience about sex the man will not say oh when i have sex with her she's just lying down like a doom body she doesn't do anything yeah. and then he he goes out finds a mate somebody who understands the rhythms maybe go back even to the former the girlfriend, former girlfriend and women also do same when they marry a man and the man is just like he can't give them the satisfaction they want and they mm. go back is it important as a church to consider or factor this information in our counseling so that we don't have because most of the adultery we talk about it's not that the woman want to go and have sex and the man yeah. want to go it's because he's not being satisfied yeah yeah uh thank you bishop uh, one of the most important thing is that men both men and women should understand that sex is definitely not insert repeat and complete mm. you, you you don't come to a place where you just insert in the woman uh, repeat your twisting of your waist that we call her to pan and then you are done and you jump yourself somewhere mm. no you see we are all coming from some places i've i've counseled a lot of people and yeah, i've had few who are virgins mm. that have not tried it before and yes the church must go deep into teaching about sex mm. and everything that goes with it that's right and so there should be pastors it's so sad that uh, those of us who are a little bold because God has made that this way to talk about sex even from the pulpit, mm. others see you as yes. a very spoiled yes. minister. Yes. You are not a Christian. Yes. A Christian cannot talk about sex, sex from yes. the pulpit. Yes. But it's to those who even criticize, mm. Mm. they are the same who are suffering. Mm. They're right. So the couple must be taught. So I ask couples who come for uh, premarital counseling that listen, um, I ask them, are you sexually active? Are mm. you a virgin? And then they will answer, okay, as I'm a virgin, I I am not a virgin. You ask the man, it's okay, we are virgins. Then I will take you through the systems because you you start from being romantic. You start. We talk about kisses. We we talk about um, we talk about um, cuddling the person. We talk about how to go into areas mm. where you kiss every part of the body mm. and you know that this person is more motivated sexually mm. when you touch this place. Mm. When you go to Genesis chapter 4, mm. in Genesis chapter 4, the Lord God opens up and the Bible says that, and the man knew his wife. Mm. That knew his wife comes in various terms. Mm. The knew his wife means, one means he discovered. Mm. Another means he was taught. Mm. Another means he led. Mm. Another means he was told. Mm. So Adam, in knowing his wife, many people think that that word simply means that he Have had sex, sex with the yeah. wife. But no, mm. we had a lot of terms for sex. It's not about having sex with the wife. Mm. He discovered, God planted some things in him. Mm. And the woman also taught, told him some things like, uh, darling, when you touch here, I, I, it, it pains me. Mm. When you do it this way, mm. I, I, I feel enjoy, very yeah. good about it. Mm. So he gets to know, okay, when I touch this place, it works. And you think men's breasts are for design? Mm. What, what is the breast? If the woman's breast is to feed the their, baby. their baby, what is the reason for the breast of men? Is it a design? It's not a design. <laughs> Everything God created is for a reason. When wives kisses or suck their husband's uh, Who's comes all over it, the body. It, it, it energizes the manhood for mm, sex. Mm. And so you ought to discover who you are living with. This is where if you are not a virgin, but you have you have explored many other areas. Open you go catch you say, where you do you where you're so you have known levels. Yeah. You still have to come to terms that now I'm meeting a different person. So you have to, this is where humility comes. You have okay. to humble yourself to be taught. Okay. One, one of my senior ministers, Reverend Dr. Uh, Victor Say, was sharing a, a testimony once uh, uh, at a seminar that a wife went for a seminar 
and they taught about sex, um, skills that you can apply. Yeah. So the husband was not in the church. The husband returned from a trip, and the wife decided that today the well, skills I, I'm flow. going to practice these skills. Yeah. And so she started giving it to the man. The man was enjoying the thing and said, the man stopped al al along the line and asked, Wait, you see, know <laughs> where did you learn this from? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's like, you know, man, strange. It was like, it, what are you doing? Who taught you this? And the, the mindset was that she's either going to be with a different man mm. and she's coming to implement mm. it. Mm. So the woman said, oh, we went for a conference. You know, a marriage conference, this is what we were taught and implementing. Oh, okay, the woman coiled in. Mm. So they met another time for sex as usual and the man said, uh, I didn't know yeah, no. That's right. So, so yeah, you. <laughs> now he's requesting for yeah. me. Yeah. So we should learn. Mm. We should study mm. and we should ask our partners, mm. where would you like to be touched? Mm. How would you like me to throw my waist? Whose position do you enjoy? Enjoy. This is where I said that the selfish cannot marry. When excuse me, when I go into sex with my wife, to have sex with my wife, I want to satisfy her. Mm. That's my mindset. Mm. And she also wants to satisfy right. me. Mm. So I sow my seed. Mm. I take time to do massage, do everything that ought to be done, and I reap. Mm. And so you should ask your partner questions. You should read about it. Churches should set people mm. to teach, teach to teach people who are about to enter into marriage, mm. people who are in marriage, what sex is and how to go about the art of sex. That's right. From from the phases of sex out, you come mm. to romance, you mm. come to the coitus, is, mm. is, you come to the climaxing mm. of it. Everything must be wet. Mm. So everything must be taught so that you know when mm. each partner mm. should really give their best. Because listen, you might meet a man, just like you said, who is very good. You might meet a woman who is very good. How do I prove it to my husband without offending him? Because mm. someone might think, sometimes when the men are teaching, the men think the men, it's okay for the men to know more about it. When a woman begins to teach, uh, you are a spoiled oh, sport, man. Yeah. Uh, like somebody said, remember no, Obia person were virgin, so onwa be man no kwanye virgin. So we, when we meet them, we let them. Are you a virgin? Say so we are not virgin. Okay, you know you are marrying someone. Ask them, man, how many rounds would you like to go in a day or in a week? He said, oh, pastor, most of the men are pastor. I want that for me. I want it four times a day. Blah blah blah. Say listen, well, as a man, when you are young, if you don't treat yourself in the way that you want to go on and have success. You get to a particular age, you'll not be able to perform. Maybe by that time, you have introduced your wife to four and three. Mm. And if you cannot satisfy mm. her when you get to that level, she might seek satisfaction Somewhere. elsewhere. Mm. We should be open to ourselves and tell our partner in love and out of respect, um, please, I don't... There are, there are men, the moment they finish, because they insert, they repeat, they are finished, and they, they, ro they just roll up somewhere and sleep. But listen... Women are like the iron box or like the diesel car. They ought to be heated before they come. That's why I made a statement that men love sex, but women make love. Mm. Men easily, the woman we see, uh, the boy is ready, up, mm. but the women are moved by what you say even before the act. Mm. How you went about it. Mm. The affection you play. Mm. He sent a message, darling, I love you. Wow, I'm married right. Mm. My wife looks very beautiful. I, I love your breast. I, I thank God I found you. The woman is already up mm, for it. Mm. And then when you go into it, you begin to explore every part of the body. This must be taught. Sex is not just when you insert. Okay. And you, no, it goes it's, it's around. Okay. It's a whole art on mm. its own. Mm. That I believe the church must teach our people. Let me ask you the straightforward question. Do you believe that what we are saying, we are looking at um, the fact that this man is sexually active, he yes. knows about it, is he well informed, the mm. woman is not well informed, mm. or the woman is well informed, she try to exhibit, show the, like the woman that she try to put those things she learned to the man, what say, about me, yeah. what say. Yeah. Now, I'm looking at another side, where you have the manhood of the man l so small, mm. that this is a woman who has swallowed bigger mm. vessels. Sure. Now, she comes to see a, a man who is so small. Now, do you recommend that during counseling, we should have a doctor or a system where you know that this woman, I'll be able to take men like this, 
so that the man knows that, look, I can't handle this kind of thing. I'm too small for this. So that it will not be like, he can't satisfy me. Because a lot of women, including Christian women, are going behind their husbands to their former boyfriends because the man can't satisfy them. And I don't also want to agree to it totally. That it doesn't matter the size. It matters. That it doesn't matter if you know how to move, no. If the thing is like the the the, the it's like this pen, and this is a woman who has swallowed the like the pistol for fufu. Okay. And you go and marry a man like this, there is no way that man can satisfy you. So is there something that we should do so that we can help the woman to, to be able to either endure or prevent it? Or stop them from getting married because we know that satisfaction may not be there. When sex becomes the most important thing in a man's life. Um, unfortunately, Bishop, that is a big no. That is why we're saying don't know, don't know, don't know. You don't know what you are going to meet. You don't know what you're going to encounter. Um, there is no grounds where the church is saying, let's check the size and ask. These questions are not asked. What is the size of your vagina? How... how uh, <laughs> What size or inches of a mound can you accommodate? These questions we don't ask them. Because it is very true, Bishop, it's very true that the, the size of a manhood does not determine the satisfaction. Because how well you go about it, it takes it takes few seconds for orgasm or climax, mm. but it takes a whole process to come okay. to that place. Mm. So if you are very good at going through the process, Bishop, even your finger can make your woman come. If she's used to coming because or having orgasm because of big pennies, unfortunately, she has to adjust because you've decided to marry this man, even though he has a small manhood. She didn't know. Yeah, you, 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 you that's what we're saying, don't know. You don't know what you are. I, I, we have a, it's working. We have a situation where the man's manhood is not working. It's impotent when they married. What do we do? This we know is deception. It's deception because the man entered the marriage knowing that he is not potent. Mm. And so with this one, there is grounds because it, it was the marriage was contracted on deception. Mm. I think that there could be grounds for the uh, separation. divorce or separation. Mm. But this one, the guy has it, even though it's small like this. You have to accept it, pray to God about it, <laughs> and he'll give you the grace. Mm. And the man should. Because when we do it this way, then we are discouraging men with small manhood. The because man, they did not the, choose their side. Uh, the man with a small manhood, yeah. going into a relationship with a woman, may meet someone who has not gone so much into sex to, excuse my language, expand. That's right. So, she's okay with she it. She might even think that is the size of all men. All men. Maybe. But when the woman yeah. has really gone into it, and I've seen from top to down, and you take a little man and say, for better, for worse, and don't know. Yes. Is it not affecting us as a church? Is it not affecting it, us? No. It... it this is where adjusting comes in. And Bishop virtually adjusting must come in and pray. I, I, I have a situation that I that came to me years past where <laughs> it nearly ended into divorce because the man was calling the wife to come so that they will have sex and the lady said in the in the I can't lie with I can fancy casa was so what the kitty had the home I didn't do it. Yeah. And I was what wow I did it for all these years and I did it the home I didn't and so it nearly. Mm. No man said she was just. She just mm, said mm. out of the abundance of the heart, the, the man speaks. speaks. It mm. means that for all these years, it has been on your heart. You have some big one in mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you are telling me this. Yeah, yeah. And so, unfortunately, once you get married, if that is the only problem you have, I'm sure, Bishop, the woman, when you accept it that this is what I have, and the man accept that yes, I cannot meet my. But if even you tell the man or the man get wind of it that. My, uh, your wife used to enjoy bigger ones and yours is small, so she can't enjoy you. You have demoralized the man. So, for the reality is this yes. there are women who are married who are using vibrators. After they have sex with a man, they, they, the man goes out yeah. and they use the artificial uh, penis yes. to satisfy themselves. Why, will it, why should that be when, if she had, there should have been a way for her to have known that. This man or 
during the counseling, there should have been say being known to so no way being known to me, Mr. Bisiana. There should be female counselors to ask, look, this thing is real. Oh. Bishop, there is Can no there's no grounds to even check the size, there's no grounds to check the potency. We just ask the man, are you acting? When you wake up in the morning, do you see your boy standing up? And he will confirm. That's why we go for medical checkup. But unfortunately, sizes have not been added to it. So I don't you think sizes should be added? No, we have a lot of women no going idea. behind their husbands. I don't think so. But the women going behind their husband should know that they are committing a grievous sin. So how do they prevent that from happening? Yes, how you can prevent it once you have entered into it is to accept it like that, that this is your lot. And then encourage your man to be able to use his hands and his tongue and every part of his body to bring you to that place of orgasm, which is very easy. At least if the thing is small like this, the man has the hand that can do some work. If one hand cannot do, two hands can add up. But if the woman was not brought up with hands, she, she has to adjust. Yes, she has to pray to God who gives her the grace. So I, I'm, I'm asking all these questions because I'm asking myself that as Christians, and we marry, and, you know, sometimes people get divorced. You will never know the reason why they get divorced. Yeah. It is later that okay. you, you hear that this is actually the cause yeah. of the divorce, that I need to respect this man, but he can't. he's not even a man, yeah. you know, because we don't understand, like, you are not educating us to understand that it's not whether the man has a big manhood or a little man. Once he becomes your husband, God yeah. expects you as a wife to submit. Now, you mentioned respect. And mm -hmm. the second one you mentioned is sex. That's right. And you, you talked about satisfaction. And that is where I came in to ask about, about this. What is the next? <laughs> <laughs> well, we give God praise. The, the next is that the, the man always also, because men are moved by their side, mm -hmm. if you want to maintain your husband, mm -hmm. then you have to be very decent and very attractive. Mm -hmm. um, men are very visual. Mm -hmm. But women are not mostly moved by what they see. Women are mostly moved by what they hear. Mm. I've known I've known someone who easily fell, a woman, a married wife who easily fell for a man. Because after many years, after 20 years, she never heard her husband tell her, you are beautiful and I love you. She dressed one day going to church and then a man saw her and said, what? You are a very beautiful woman. And she said she fell for the man. Because when she married, initially the husband used to tell her, you're beautiful. After like two, three years, that was the end of it. Woman needs affection. But the men are moved by side. So if you are a wife, the father will talk about food. Because food, from scriptures, we've got to know that, yes, most of the wives prepared food for their husband. Once in a while along the line, Jesus Christ prepared something mm. for the church so mm. the men can also cook. cook. Mm. But then, most men enjoy their food. They want to see good things. And the, the fourth one will be added. That because they are visual, because they want to see attractive things, their wife must always look presentable, mm. must always look attractive. You should attract your husband. So when you are in the house, that's where you ought to wear all the... The nice now we have the G strings, we have the nice sexy uh, uh, panties that a wife should wear, and then have some. You need to look nighty. attractive at home. Very attractive at all times. Smell good. Yes, at all times towards your husband, and then we we moved without that. Mm. You even kill the man's passion for sex. Wow. Because if you if you are not if he he doesn't see that attraction, mm. how can he be? ready for sex to, to sleep with you. Someone is ready to attract him. Mm. So you give him that respect, you are open, you open up for sex, but before he even is motivated to have sex with you, he must see something that attracts him to be ready for sex. Mm. And so then the next thing will be their food, which you've mm. mentioned already, mm. that most men want to, want to be sure that they are a wife who is a good cook. Mm who can give them good meals to enjoy. And then the, the food aspect, like I said, could be shared. Mm. But then a wife who does not know how to cook is a shame to marriage. Mm. It's a disgrace to marriage. Mm. So our mothers should take time to train their daughters and even add their sons mm. as to how we prepare food. 
Because this is this is known way long that one of the ways to a man's heart mm. is through his mouth. Okay. When someone cooks food, good food for a man, for a man, one of the days mm. they might enjoy the under food. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So make okay. sure you are very good cook. If you don't know how to cook, you don't know how to prepare good meals as a wife, you should go and learn. How to set your husband good tables, use nice plates, and let him eat like a king. Mm. Whilst you, we, we either eat together, or whilst he's eating, you are there behind him, rubbing his back and speaking with him. You have gained such a great man for mm. yourself, mm. for life. So, so you, are, you you made a statement that if a man begins to eat from somewhere, mm. he will end up sleeping with the person. Very so. What about women who buy food from outside? What does it do to the man? Well, these are women maybe who don't know how to cook or who feel lazy to cook. Once in a while, we should be prepared to eat from outside. But if this is where we come to the place of the virtuous woman, mm. every husband, the next thing that we're looking for, every husband is looking for, because the woman came in as a help meet. Okay. The help meet for the husband means you are coming to support him. Okay. So every husband needs an indigenous wife, an industrious wife, for that matter. A wife that is very hard working to help the man, whether she's also working, or to help the man in the house, just in taking care of the children, keeping everything in the neat in the house. A hard working woman, a lazy wife is not accepted. So Proverbs chapter 30 outlines that the woman, the wife, the industrious wife, the virtuous wife, is always working to make sure that her house is well kept, her house is well taken care of. The husband appears very neat out there. Proverbs so, 31. Yeah, Proverbs 31. Thank mm -hmm. you, Bishop. So, husbands need dutiful wives. Mm -hmm. Women that are very supportive. That stands with them. That helps them because God said it is not good for the man to be alone. To be alone. Mm -hmm. So, I'm bringing a companion, mm. one. To make your and life better. help meet, mm. yes. So, the woman becomes, the wife becomes the friend of the husband and she becomes a partner, a supporter, an encourager. So, the wife must encourage the husband. If nobody respect, if nobody support me, if nobody exalt me, if nobody pushes me on, my wife is the my number one and the last uh, uh, fan that must push me or urge me on. To love. Your wife should be your friend. I tell must be a friend and must be my fan. Mm. She must encourage me. When I'm down, when I come home and things don't go on well, I expect my wife to say, darling, it shall be well. It shall be well. Keep it what about women who don't know all these? They didn't know that they are supposed to be the anchor of the man, to hold the man, to support the man. When storm comes, it should be your number one fan. They don't know all these things. How do they know? Uh, I've chanced upon some things that is happening in society that alarms me. Mm. Look, a husband is with a wife. They've enjoyed life when the man had money. Now the man has lost his business, doesn't have much money. And the wife, mm. who is a friend, who is a lover, can prepare food in the house and does not give the husband, but because she enjoys it with the children. Because him lazy. Because he does not bring in money. income nowadays. Mm. It's a shame. It's happening everywhere. It's a shame for any woman to be happy. One, I don't think you understand Christianity. I don't think you understand the position of a wife. The two are one. Once, by the grace of God, you've been able to prepare something and you know the man is not lazy, but that he's found himself in a very difficult situation then you should be able to share everything you have in common. And the two, how can you give your body and keep your money? Mm. How can you offer sex to a husband and hide your money? Your money? Mm. No. When, when, what, how will one know this about a woman before they get married, it, during courtship? What, what are some of the signs that you should you should look for? Okay. To know whether a woman will support you with her money or not. Because that is one area that is really causing a lot of problems yeah. at home. Sadly, 
Yes, Bible said that the two shall be one. This is where we ought to steady ourselves before we marry. And then let me let me just add this one so you, you continue, you add to it. Do you believe that we should have six months preparation towards marriage like we do or it should be two uh, years? I don't believe in six months. I don't even believe in two years. I, I believe in starting from the, even the primaries. From age two, age three, you can start teaching the child about taking care no, of No, I'm talking life. about finding a woman. Yes. You found someone you want to marry. At yes. church, I come to introduce a lady I want to marry her. You ask me to go through counseling. How long should it be? Bishop, I don't believe more. I do premarital counseling, but I don't believe in that. In, in marriage counseling? <laughs> yes, I do marriage counseling, premarital counseling, okay. before they marry. Okay. I do it because we came to meet a system. Mm. And that system we met is that before you marry, two months, six months, you must go through premarital counseling. Mm. I don't believe in that based on my understanding of how things should be. Okay. I believe that once the guy has come of age, even from the Sunday school, we should teach them mm. how to know the right partner. It shouldn't just be the six months no, before no, you no, start no, doing no, those no, things. No, 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 no. I should be able to teach the youth in the church, in the church how to know the right partner, how to know who loves you. Someone asked me a question one day. Uh, Daddy, Daddy, how do I know that if somebody loves me, how do I know so that I will accept to marry him? I said, this is a good question. If someone loves you, all aspects of love you must understand. Mm. If someone loves you, then the person will respect you. The person would like to sacrifice to make you happy. I mentioned that the measure of every love is sacrifice, is giving. Mm. So that's why when you are in love, you discover that you are giving, giving, giving to the one you love. Mm. This will tell you. How can you come into a relationship as a girl? We are not even married. And we're asking me to pay your, your fees. We're asking me to buy you this. We're asking me to buy you this. You should think that that is a grave. Mm. That is somebody who will never help you in life. Mm. The one who loves you from the onset, you see they are giving you gifts. So before you go to the premarital counseling we are talking about, you already know what love is. You already know what marriage is. You already know the signs that tells you that this person loves me and this person will be of help to me when we marry. Mm. If you're not if you're not not mm. So the signs will be there. When you meet the person, I've mentioned from the onset, is respect you. From the onset, he sacrificed to make you happy. From the onset, communication on the ending. If you love someone, you always want to see the person. That's where intimacy, intimacy comes in. Communication comes out of the word intimacy, mm. uh, uh, from the word, the Greek word koinonia. Mm. Out of that same word, we have fellowship. Mm. Out of that same word, we have intimacy. Out of that same word, it is friendship. Mm. That's why I would say it is not good for the man to be alone. He needs a companion, a help meet. And so, right from the onset, if I, if I want to know you love me, you always want to be with me. Mm. You always want to see me. Mm. When you fall in love, every second, even if you are apart, you want to see where your lover is. Darling, I'm here. Where are you? Mm. Your house is, you are living in Kotobabi. Mm. Your partner is living in uh, 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 Pram Pram. You intentionally come around to Aquaria, uh, uh, Tameria and say, baby, are you home? I came to see somebody you like. You just want to see the person you love. So love always want to be with a person or with the beloved. That is where communication, you talk without getting tired. What you are saying, it's so beautiful. And I'm looking at it in another realm, which is okay. not what we are discussing, mm. but in our relationship with God. Yes. God that created, when you love God, you always want to be close to that him. Is, the person is your desire. It's your passion. And now, so when we love, when we know how to love God, we can easily love God. Yes, the God established marriage. If you want to understand marriage, then you must go to the producer. Mars Moreau said that uh, abuse is inevitable if you don't have the purpose of a thing. God is the manufacturer of marriage. If you want to understand marriage, it is written in the good book. Everything that we are sharing is mm. written in the Bible, black and white. Mm. But we ought to understand what the scriptures. That's how I came to know that. And Adam knew his mm. wife mm. is interpreted in various dimensions. Mm. 
he was taught, he was told, he discovered. Mm. And so, before you even say, I will marry you, you should, uh, you should be my friend, and I should have known a lot of things about, about you. you. So I don't rush into marriage and say, we are going for premarital counseling. And Bishop, that's why I said, most people go to premarital counseling as another step before marriage. Mm. So they don't even take the... Okay. Couple, people want to marry come for counseling. And I, I tell them, bring a notebook and write notes. Sometimes they will come without a notebook. And some of them in today's world, so I'll put it on my mobile phone. The following week, you ask them, what are the things you learned? And they will struggle to produce what you taught them. Because all their mind at that time is, oh, let me marry and mm. go and have sex. Mm. And so whatever you are teaching them, I think about 70% does not really sink into That's them. true. You're right. This is why I believe that premarital counseling must start before the person even chooses, sees, uh, sees a life partner and chooses. We don't do that in the church. We don't do that because they ought to be guided. The youth. I. Some of us suffered marital challenges because we were not taught. That's right. And so the things that we are sharing are mm, experiences. Real. And so we are teaching the upcoming generation. If not you are not married now, you are blessed. You are to make blessed. a sensible decision. Mm. Because you are being taught how to see the person you love. Mm. One of my daughters came to me one day and said, Daddy, I have three guys who want to marry me. Um, I said, okay, bring their pictures, bring their names, and tell me something about them. I was in the UK. She sent the three of them. Nice guys. There was one of them who was not too handsome. So I asked her question. Among these ones, who have time for you? Who always want to see you? Who want the best of you? And which of them do you love? I said, oh, I love this guy, but this guy, he always doesn't have time for me. He's always here. He has money. Uh, he's always here. He's always there. So that he, I said, but he's the one I love. I said, okay, you think you love that person? Okay, let's see. Because marriage, that is born out of love, must be a reciprocal love. Okay. One way love, you should not accept to marry someone because the love is one way. Mm. If you think you love someone, you marry someone, you have made a big mistake. That's right. If somebody loves you and you marry, you have made a big mistake. Marriage should be on two grounds. Both of you. Both mutual love must work. And so, the, she, she told me about the second person that is also like this. He's good, he sings in the choir, he sings in the church, and the bishop, I like him, is this. Then the third person, the guy you brought to the third, Say, Bishop, this guy is nice. I like him. And he has this business. He spends time. He calls me. Want to know my welfare. He counsels me. And he always want to know something about me. I said, he's the right guy to marry. Today, she blesses God. Because after she married this guy, the rest of the people have messed up a lot of women's life. Wow. And so, you should know who really loves you, who really want to just enjoy your life want to have pleasure with you. Mm. Most of the time, we are motivated into relationship because the person moves us or, or pulls something out of us, which is called lust. Mm. The erotic love is fully at work, but the agape love, the filial love, is not seen, which is something we must always seek for. Mm. When someone loves you and that marriage will work, they easily forgive you when you make a mistake. Mm. These are some of the signs you should mm. be looking for. Mm. As a, these are some of the things we should teach our youth before they even said, I want to marry. Mm. So by the time they come to what we call premarital counseling, they've already, already known. When you say that this is the person I'm going out with, it is a time to study. Bishop, do you know what our fathers used to do years past? Mm. They will make a research into the families, the background, the family you are going to marry. Do they take care of children? Are they irresponsible? Do they have madness or some kind of sickness? So they will do all these inquiries before they allow their children to marry. Now, the responsibility, the onus is not lies upon the individual. Go and seek for your own. So before you say, sister, I want to marry you. Before you say, brother, I want to marry you. Then you should spend about a year or two to do your studies. about who Because you are going to marry the person for the rest of your life. Do you even know who you are? Mm. Have you even spent the time to know who Yourself. you are? Yourself. What makes you angry? At a point in time, I knew whilst, whilst growing up, I had to, when we married, I told my wife some secret and I told her, anytime you see that I'm maybe angry or under pressure because of a few things, mm. do this and do this. You have calmed me. And she's using it to manipulate me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's beautiful. I, I, I like the 
idea of bringing the children. Last week, you said that the moment you give birth to a boy, you have to start teaching them how to talk to women, how to relate with women and all that. And today, you've gone extensively to talk about the fact that, um, I mean, getting married to a person, you should know the person and also know who you are, yes, who the person is. You have to know a few things about the person yeah. to see whether yeah. they, will, they will do this. Now, I want to ask uh, these. Um, you were talking about previously our fathers mm -hmm. will go and do a background check on mm -hmm. the woman, the family, and all those things. Now, we are not doing that in the church. Mm -hmm. Is it that the church has, like, this faith thing, even if the woman's family here will pray, or the word we say, God sent you into the family, perhaps, to go and deal with that beast in the family. <laughs> and so the man is going to marry. He has seen that this family, this is what the pastor said, don't worry, God will deal with it. As you decide to love the person, the two of you are going to get married, you are just going to dissociate yourself from the family, go and fight. Is it working? Is it working that when you go into the family, the man, number one, is sent? Is it true that the man is sent to the family to go and be the, uh, the God said, I saw for a man. <laughs> so God has sent you to the family to fight that sickness in that family. So you marry this one and go and, just like marrying somebody, he has A, is an SS. Yes, yes. And you say that when I marry the person, uh, anointing is upon me, so you know I'll be able to handle all it. Does it work? Thank you, Bishop. I believe by the grace of God that no one can change another person. Mm. And then, as we marry into families, you should know that the family that you are going into, they have their own history, they have their own upbringing, they have whatever. And so, when you are entering into a family, you cannot change anything. Mm. The person you, you the husband is supposed to rather build the wife and bring the wife up. Mm. Yes, mm. the husband must be able to is a husband. He is using like a farmer. Mm. You have to cultivate some nature in the wife. This is where the submission comes in. So you must always the husband must always be ahead. You are the pace setter. You are the leader. The visionary. Okay, so I have this testimony from um, Prophet Kakrabedi. If he's lying, then I'm lying. Mm -hmm. He said that when he was get, he was getting ready to marry, and he prayed. He got he, he got into contact with a lady, and he prayed. And at one time, he had a vision that he had gone into the house of this woman, and then when he entered the house, some beings, some short short guys, took him out of the house and threw him out. About three times he had this revelation. And then he asked God, what should I do? This is the lady I'm marrying about and I'm praying about it. He said, God did not say it. I've showed you. Mm. You make your own decision. He said he spoke to the lady and said, my dear lady, sorry, I'm a young man. I cannot fight the battles because this is what I've seen. It pained the woman, mm. but he made a, he made a, a sensible decision. Because God is showing you the battles you will fight mm. if you enter into that family. 